seems to be nice and dry there, and nice and dry there as well. Welcome back to Love with a Classic and Daily Driving at Classes. This is my daily driver, 1975 XJ6. And we're talking a little bit about the realities of daily driving at Classic because things happen, things go wrong. It's not really, some people think it's a little glamorous with an old classic car. It really isn't. However, I just do it because I love it and it's a lot of fun. And uh, my kids also love it. So one of the reasons. However, I've had... When I put this car back on the road, I bought a set of stainless hose clamps for the engine. And I'm never going to buy that brand again because they were terrible. Uh, they pinched the hoses and when you, really the more you tighten them, the more they leaked. So they damaged some of the hoses. And I've had a small, small leak of the heater hose now for a while. And that hasn't really bothered me too much. It got a little bit worse. And then I tightened it a little bit more. And when I was driving yesterday... We basically had coolant pouring out and I just drove quickly home and uh, yeah, we didn't lose too much, but it wasn't great. So I've gone through my pile of hoses. I have one that should fit another hose clamp. So we're going to just replace that now. And that's the reality. It's your daily driver. It's Saturday afternoon. I have maybe 40 minutes to fix this real quick before I got to do other things. So let's try and quickly get this done. We're in my little carport here. My workshop is full of customer cars. So here, is where it's always been a little bit, a little bit wet. You see that? And if you look here, right, we have coolant there in the bottom, but we lost a bit of coolant driving yesterday. So not the greatest. I have a, uh, a hose that will fit here. This is a series one intake manifold. So I have to modify the hose a little bit, but let me just drain out a little bit of coolant and we'll start replacing this first i thought that maybe we could just cut a piece of the hose off we might try that because uh, the new hose is it's not for here it's for a v12 sort of things i'll have to cut it but it has a good bend in it and um, so we'll see if we can just get away with that here is the old hose and so never mind the bleeding i cut myself down there it's just soft and mushy at the end. It's not very old, but it's been pinched. That's why it leaks a little bit. So I took this hose and I cut this end off here so it will fit because it had a, another bend on it and it will fit nicely there. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit more. One of the big issues is I wanted to put a Series 2 thing on here. The intake manifold is stuck on the engine really, really bad, and this is stuck on there. So... It's that little gash right there that could be the issue. But we'll clean it up very much, make sure that we clamp up here, try and get the seal there, and see how it goes. That has been cleaned up nice and smooth. And I have one of these little thinner clamps, which are the original style clamps on an 80s um, uh, Jag B12 or something. So that will go on there pretty nicely, I think. I'll get this on and then fill up with coolant. We'll start up and check for leaks. It's really, really windy out here, but I just drove just around the block. It's all fully warmed up now and seems to be nice and dry there and nice and dry there as well. It's hot in there. Thermostat is open, so it's nice and warm. I need to run a little bit of an errand, do some things, but uh, I'll report back in a day or two and we'll see if it's leaking or not. And we'll talk a little bit more about daily driving this classic. Still windy today, but absolutely gorgeous early morning here. Going for a drive in a little bit. So I just thought I'd check. Went for a drive yesterday, but everything is nice and dry. I just topped up the cool a tiny bit. We're talking a uh, couple of um it was just down uh maybe one or two centimeters there 
Um, expansion tank was still full, so that's really good. So we'll put all this back together and we're gonna go for about 40 minute drive today. We'll see how it does. Hopefully we have the coolant leaks completely fixed. All right, it's a little bit later. I'm on my way back. Just been at the riding arena with the kids, watching my wife uh, do some horse training. And so far, no leaks or anything like that. And that's sort of the fun thing about this car I want to talk about. If you feel like daily driving a classic, it is really fun. But you got to love it. You got to be prepared like I was, you know. You got to have things at home. You got to have a spare hose if something happens, something like that. Uh, I do have a relatively modern car, an X-Type, that I can drive sometimes. However, my wife had it this weekend. And I really try as much as I can to drive this thing. However, things happen. It, this thing is not perfect, and that's really why I'm using it. I'll show you a little bit when we get there. Um, I have a little bit of a crack going in one side. This is a little bit of Bondo and a place from some previous owner. This is skim skim coat, but it's starting to crack a little bit there. So I need to fix that and do a little bit of paint work on that this summer, but it's not really going to get any worse by then. You'll always find a little bit of leaks and things like that. And you need to try and drive around with a little bit of tools with you. I don't have that much. I have a couple of screwdrivers and some wrenches and things like that. I do have some oil with me and do have some coolant. That is pretty much it. I don't do that much driving because I work from home. However, this week so far, I think once we get back home, it's Sunday today, I will have done about uh, 300 kilometers this weekend, which, uh, you know, not really, or not this weekend, this week, which isn't too bad for, uh, you know, working from home. I take the kids um, to school, to daycare, bring them home, you know, we go and do activities like this. I got my two kids in the back and, they really do love this thing. I always want to go for a ride in the green car. And uh, this is by far probably their favorite car of the fleet. And it's one of my favorites as well. Because I love being able to use it like this. Like right now the roads are still full of you know, sand and grip from the winter. There's no snow or anything. It's cold though. It's just like one degree above freezing. But sunny and nice. And it's just you know a lovely old thing. But uh, yeah, got the kids here talking in the back. They're excited. We're going to go home and have a little bit of lunch. Then uh, after that, I'll show you the little thing around the car. And uh, we'll do a nice wrap up of this video at home. Back home again, enjoying some coffee. By the way, if you feel like supporting the channel, I always have a store down below. It's just some shirts, some mugs and things with the logos and some different things on it. Just, you know, any support is always really appreciated. Everything goes back into these videos and the channel. That was some good coffee. All right, I was going to talk about some of the exterior damage. We're on the fourth season of daily driving this thing. Winter, everything. Things happen. And we've had a little bit of bodywork issue for the first time. And this car was never pristine. That's why we're doing this whole daily driving thing. Because it's not worth restoring this thing to a concourse standard. I mean, it's on its fourth engine and like 22nd owner. All of that. But it's great to enjoy it every day. So let me show you what has happened. This is the only bit of body damage that's happened in those four years, and I'm gonna sort it out uh, during the summer when I have some other things to drive. But let me show you what it is, and it's really quite minor. It's on this side, and not sure if it's happening because of uh, that the sun is usually always on this side of the car. Don't know. The car has been painted many times on both sides, probably not at the same time, so hard to tell. But this is just a chip. Someone's hit the door and it's chipped. However, this here is a chip that is sort of a little bit loose. So this area here, I would like to just use a small little sandblasting unit around there and fix it. Because that's probably just a little bit of bond at some point. I don't think it's a lot. I think it's sort of like spray filler, which was really common in the 90s and things. And the same thing here on the back. It looks a lot worse here. But that's just cracking down like that. So that's something else I want to fix up. It doesn't look that great. But um, we'll do the same treatment there. And I'll paint the rear wing. And that rear door. 
and it's fine. That's really the only thing that's happened in all that time. And I really think that's not bad at all. It's really just no because we've driven on some gravel roads today. But that's the fun thing about this car. I use it every day. Um, and I absolutely love just the way it is. Give it a wash once a week. Try and keep it looking as nice as I can. But it gets used and just enjoyed. So the realities of daily driving classics is something that you maybe want to do. If I were you, I would not pick a pristine car. I'm really happy with this one I picked. I paid around a thousand dollars for this thing four years ago with a bad engine and a bad interior. We went through all of that and now it has a good engine. Pretty decent interior, some, still some stuff left to do. Paint is decent. It shines up when I wash it and just give it some wax. However, things happen. Those two things are the only really major things I want to fix. And it's not going to cost very much to have that fixed. I'll probably either paint it myself or I'll have a local paint shop, which is not that expensive. Just do two, those two panels. So that's something I do. I would not choose a pristine car because things happened. Um, I have a dent on the bonnet, which is it's hard to see because I polished, you know, the scratches with it. But that was me just driving home from work um, back when I wasn't uh, working full time with YouTube at my shop. And the truck in front of me, a brick fell off the back of it, bounced up and it hit that and it hit the top of my chrome. Sure, I, I wasn't really happy about it. I was just really happy to hit my windshield. But, you know, if this thing was an absolute pristine car, I'd be really annoyed. But here, it's just, all right, it's another scratch. It's another story. Moving on. Um, I think it's a good idea to pick something that's pretty big, like this thing. Uh, just because size does matter when it comes to safety. Yes, there are no airbags or crumple sounds. But this thing does have a lot of metal to crumple in front of you. It's quite heavy. There are solid reinforcement bars in the doors and things for side impacts. So that's really good. The Series 2 was the first one to have that. So yeah, size does matter. Because really, the small cost, even, even if you drive a lot, the small cost is fuel. So yes, 4.2 straight 6, maybe not the most fuel efficient, but really not that bad. But if you think about it, this thing will not depreciate. It will probably just stay at the exact same value maybe even creep up a little bit so what i would have gotten for this car about four years ago when i was done with it i'll get more for it now even though it's probably a little bit more worn out just because they've gone up in price so i would do that there are some really interesting videos i was watching one of my number 27 recently where he calculated the running cost four years for a uh, mercedes um S-Class Coupe, really nice car. They compare that to leasing a new luxury electric vehicle. And it was tens of thousands of pounds that you saved over four years from doing that. And he wasn't even counting the count of electricity. So if you think about how much is a car loan or how much is a lease, I've never had a car loan or a lease. But let's say, let's say you have a lease that is, let's say this $500 a month. This thing does not cost 500 a month, um, or I mean a car loan is maybe 500 a month, but not a very expensive car loan. This thing does not cost me 500 a month in parts and things. Now it costs me some a hose, which if I had to buy that, that's probably, let's say it's 20 bucks. Um, let's say some coolant, about the same, 40 bucks for driving one month. So yeah, if it uses 30, 40% more fuel than a different car, that doesn't really matter in the long run. To get something that you enjoy to drive and use it. Because I think this is probably one of the most economical things that I can run around it and be happy with. Because, yeah, I can do all the work to it myself. Parts are cheap and easily available. I have a lot of spares. I have, I have a whole room. I might show you guys that at some point. I have a whole room of spares for these endless stuff. I got spare engines, spare transmissions, you name it, I have it. And yeah, it doesn't really matter what it costs to fill up. Yes, if you have a really, really long commute, like you're driving two hours one way, you might want to think about it. But honestly, you know, cheap insurance, everything adds up. So daily driving a classic can also be a bit of an economical thing. Besides, you know, it's fun. It's a way of expressing your interests and your hobbies. And I find it to be a bit of recycling. Um, 
I don't think it's bad for the environment, but that's not something I really, really want to get into. But I like the whole mentality of make do and mend. When I have something that I like, like this gun, I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to fix those things there before you start rusting. I'm going to, you know, I fixed that leak there on the engine before I lost enough coolant so that something would go wrong. You know, if I, I'm driving and then like, like a year or so ago, I heard a noise up in the left front a little bit. Wheel bearing on the way out. I replaced the wheel bearing the next couple of days. You just keep looking after it and this thing's almost 50 years old. And I'm hoping I can get another 20, 30 years out of enjoyment out of this. At least that is my plan. My plan is to be able to put as many miles as possible on this thing, you know, without going crazy. I'm, I'm not going out of my way to drive a longer way home or anything like that. But my plan is just to see how many miles can I put on this? Can this be a really just high mileage hero of a classic XJ? I don't know. Just a little random thoughts in here, but just... Yeah, sums up of daily driving a classic. I absolutely love it, and I think you should give it a shot. If you have a car in this sort of condition, which, you know, some people would say, oh, restore that, get it perfect. Or you can just put some wax on it, under seal it a bit, rust proof it, give it a service, and drive it. Anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot. Till next time, I'm Adam. This is Lumina for Classic. I'll see you soon.